Well, Judge Jeanine's very upset because she was not mentioned uh, there by the president. I think I heard her throw a glass in the green room. But besides that, we, we, wanted, to, we wanted to get that in there. About the elites versus the regular folks, Dr. Loudon, that's so effective, and the crowd just loves it. No, they absolutely do. And this president has joined with the American people in ways that no other president has before, Republican or Democrat, to say, I remember during his campaign, he said it very clearly, I want all Americans to be as rich as me. And that gave Americans a vision of going back to work again, of reclaiming our economy, uh, both, both nationally and internationally. And those are the things that he has delivered on. And so he has every right to stand there and say that to that crowd because he's delivered on it. And Corey, here's the choice. Here's how he's framing it here. He's saying these people in Ohio, you know, they're smart people. They own a business. They own land. They have families. They have savings. They have high salaries. They're doing great. And then you have some little pale weasel in a small apartment making a tiny amount of money in Manhattan or Washington, D.C. He's got nothing going on, no action. And he's calling those people in the heartland deplorables, He's calling them toothless, and that's why people don't like the people in the media. Well, Jesse, it's not just the people in the media. It's the bi-coastal nature of either going to Stanford or Harvard and then looking down on everybody else who didn't attend one of those Ivy League schools. And what this president talked about was he's wealthier than they are. He's got a bigger apartment than they do, he, and he's now the president of the United States. But more importantly... He's there with the hardworking men and women in Ohio every single day who are seeing the benefits of the economy which he has put in place to put Americans back to work. He went through those steel miners and coal workers who can now go back to work every day. They didn't go to Harvard. They didn't go to Stanford. Those are the hardworking Americans that are better off than those professional elitists who look down their nose at others. Under Barack Obama, yeah. this country lost nearly... I think 300 to 400,000 manufacturing jobs. And this president, only less than two years, has added 400,000 plus manufacturing jobs, Gina. But I want to talk about some of the news he made tonight. Some people do or don't know this. Dianne Feinstein, the senator from California, I think she's uh, one of the ranking members on the Senate Intelligence Committee and leading the charge against collusion and all that kind of stuff. It was discovered that there was a Chinese spy, a mole, who was her driver for 20 years, driving the senator around. God knows what he was hearing, you know, in the front seat while she was chatting on the cell phone. And she's now upset with Donald Trump for being a national security risk. Let's hear the president address it. Speaking of China, it's just come out that the Democratic leader and the leader of the Russian investigation... Diane Feinstein had a Chinese spy as her driver for 20 years. And she's leading the Russian investigation. Okay, so it's so funny the Democrats, you know, they get hacked. Podesta gives his password, which was password to the enemies. <laughs> you know, she's got a mole in the back seat. Uh, some crazy IT guys working for Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Then he flees for the border. And Donald Trump is a risk. Come on. Yeah, but you make an excellent point, Jesse. And this is what the American people are watching. And they're seeing this hypocrisy and they're going, you've got to be kidding me. Do they believe their own lies? And Jesse, the only place they believe those lies are on the two coasts, as Corey just pointed out, and also in the D.C. bubble. But the people in the heartland, the people that he was talking to tonight, they see all of this. They see the hypocrisy. They know it. And this is what elected this president. And this is what will deliver the midterms for him, I believe again, too. Yeah, speaking of the midterms, let's play some sound from the president and we can have Cora react. Uh, he made a prediction. Here it is. They're talking about this blue wave. I don't think so. I don't think so. Maxine Waters is leading the charge. Maxine. She's a real beauty. Maxine. A seriously low IQ person. Seriously. Maxine Waters. She's leading the charge. You know, uh, all throughout, like hundreds of, like 100 years, I guess, 125 years, whoever has 
the White House, that party tends to lose the midterms. I don't know why. Maybe it's complacency. Maybe you all fight so hard for the presidency and, you know, you win and you're a little complacent. But, I mean, that was two years ago. Uh, so I just said, why? But we have the greatest economy in the history of our country. We have things that have never happened before. And look, if the Democrats get in, they're going to raise your taxes. You're going to have crime all over the place. You're going to have people pouring across the border. So why would that be a blue wave? I think it could be a red wave. I tell you what, really, I think it should be a red wave. So, Corey, what do you see happening in the midterms? You know, Jesse, I think the president's right in one regard. I think you're going to see Republicans gain seats in the U.S. Senate. The map for the Republicans is very favorable, particularly in those places where Donald Trump won two years ago, where Democrat incumbents are currently running for re-election. So you're going to see a gain of two to three seats at minimum of Republicans. On the House side, there is a very real possibility now that the Republicans are going to keep that House in a majority. It will be a slimmer majority, right. but the Republicans are going to hold the House. And the reason for that is what Donald Trump just outlined. You know, it goes back to the basic question, are you better off today than you were two years ago? Unequivocally, by every metric, the answer is yes. The economy is booming. The stock market is booming. Unemployment, particularly amongst Hispanics and African Americans, are at lowest levels of ever recorded. And all those things point to putting people back in office who've delivered in the last two years. So I think you'll see a Republican majority come November. And I don't necessarily believe the accuracy of some of the polls right now. They have a Democrat generic lead by about seven points in the head-to-head -head congressional matchup. I don't think that Trump supporters talk to pollsters. They definitely didn't talk to pollsters on November 2016. So that's yeah. baked in there, and it's going to be a lot tighter than people think. So the president, this was his third big campaign rally this week. We have so much to play for you. We're talking about the elections. Let's talk about even further. 2020, the president named some potential matchups, and here's what he had to say. Let's say I'm running against uh, Pocahontas or, or Crazy Bernie. I tell you, I got to hand it to Bernie. I saw him up there the other day. That hair is getting whiter and whiter, and he's getting crazier and crazier. And I saw him. We'll stop Donald Trump. We're stopping him. We're going to stop. And I looked at my wife. I said, you know what? You got to hand it to that guy. Man, that guy, he doesn't quit, and that's okay. Crazy Bernie. He is one crazy dude. <laughs> one crazy dude. <laughs> Doctor, what do you think about that one? Well, this is the thing. He's cutting right into the base, even of some of those who might have considered themselves pretty far left once upon a time. If you look On at trade, these new job right. numbers... Well, that, but also if you look at the new jobs number, numbers this week, unemployment um, is down even among high school dropouts, Jesse. You know, think about it. The party of the, the little guy, the party of the guy that is the have-not, right? And this president's coming along and making their life better. What in the world are the Democrats going to do with that? What are the socialists going to do with that? I don't know, because I think this president wins on that. What did the president say? I love the poorly educated. <laughs> I, think, I think he was saying that with love, right, Corey? You got a quick wrap. Here we go. Well, he, he was, but Jesse, remember, look at the numbers that came out this week for the president. The African Americans are now supporting this president at almost 30 percent. If he just gets double digits in the 2020 election, he wins by such a wide margin think that the last that. election looks I like a I want everybody squeaker. to think about what Corey just said. Uh, black support for President Donald Trump, according to Rasmussen, has gone from 15 percent to 29 percent. Guys, wow, unbelievable. Got to run. Thanks. Thank you.